Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to try to determine how many collisions molecules in the atmosphere encounter in a given second. We try to understand what the interaction is between molecules in the atmosphere. To do that, we're going to try to calculate the mean free path. In addition to that, we're going to find the mean time between collisions. So what do we mean by the mean free path? Well, the word mean means average, and free means without collisions. In other words, how far can a molecule travel on average before it will bump into another molecule? And that's kind of an interesting uh, concept. So here we can see that a molecule will bounce into another molecule, will bounce into another molecule, and so forth. Sometimes the distance between collisions is very short. Sometimes it's a little bit farther. So what is the average distance, the mean distance between those collisions? To kind of put that in perspective, a typical molecule has a diameter of about 0.4 nanometers, about 400 picometers. And to put that into context, the typical wavelength of visible light is between 400 and 700 nanometers. So, to calculate the mean free path, in this case we're going to take an oxygen molecule, a diatomic molecule of oxygen, at about 300 Kelvin, which is slightly higher than room temperature, and one atmosphere of pressure. So the mean free path using the letter lambda is simply equal to the velocity times time. Distance equals velocity times time. That's pretty straightforward. We can calculate it using the volume of a container with the number of molecules in it and the radius of each molecule squared with some constants in it that can be converted using the ideal gas equation by taking the constant K, which is the, the gas constant divided by Avogadro's number, times the temperature of the gas, times the pressure of the gas, are still being the radius of the molecule. So we put in the constant, the temperature in Kelvin, the radius of an oxygen molecule, and the pressure, one atmosphere, 1.01 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. When we calculate it out, we get 5.8 times 10 to the minus 8 meters, which is 58 nanometers, roughly one-tenth the wavelength of visible light. So it's a very, very tiny distance that molecules travel in the air before they collide with another molecule, at least near the surface of the Earth at one atmosphere of pressure. The mean temperature, uh, not the mean temperature, but the mean time between collisions is therefore the, way, the distance that they travel on average divided by their velocity. And in the atmosphere, oxygen molecules of 300 Kelvin travel at almost 500 meters per second. When we divide one by the other, we get a time of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 10 seconds, which is slightly over one-tenth of a nanosecond. That's a very small amount of time. When we take the inverse of that, we realize there's about 8 billion collisions per second between molecules in the atmosphere. 8 billion times every second do they bump into each other, which gives them ample opportunity to transfer energy to one another. So if one molecule has more energy, the other one has less, simply the one with more energy will transfer that energy to one that has less energy and so forth. Because of the, because of the way they collide and the way they bump into each other, they can slowly transfer kinetic energy from one molecule to another. Obviously, plenty of opportunities with this enormous number of collisions, which is just one of the means in which energy is transferred within the atmosphere. So at least that helps, and slowly we'll get the understanding we need to really begin to see how energy is transferred through the atmosphere and how the atmosphere protects us, like a nice blanket, protects us from, of course, the very cold conditions of space. And that's how we do that. 